Hey guys, it's Miss Miklos, and um, today we're talking about 8.3, which is dealing with geometric sequences. So last class we talked about arithmetic, and today we're talking about geometric. And so a sequence is geometric when the ratios of consecutive numbers are the same. So the sequence a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3, a sub 4, a sub n is geometric when there's a number r such that a sub 2 divided by a sub 1 is equal to a sub 3 divided by a sub 2, which is equal to a sub 4 divided by a sub 3, which is equal to r. And r cannot be equal to 0. We call this r the common ratio. So basically what we're doing, to find r, take any term and divide it by the previous term. So in arithmetic, we had a common difference, which was um, any term minus the previous term. Here we have our common ratio, which is any term divided by the previous term. So example one, it says if the sequence is geometric, we need to find the common ratio r. And in order to figure out the pattern to see if something is geometric or arithmetic or neither, we need to find three terms. Okay, so we're going to start here. I'm going to find out what is a sub 1. a sub 1 is 2 to the first power, which is 2 a sub 2 would be 2 squared, which is 4, and a sub 3 would be 2 cubed, which is 8. So if we look at this, it looks like I'm multiplying by the same thing each time. So I can take any term and divide it by the previous term, and we would get that our ratio is 2. So 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8. Okay, so that does work. This is geometric. Okay, our next problem here, let's go ahead and figure out what is a sub 1. So I have 4 times 3 to the first power, which is 12. a sub 2 would be 4 times 3 squared, which would give us 4 times 9, which is 36. And a sub 3 is going to be 4 times 3 cubed. So 4 times 27 gives me 108. So to find the ratio, I'm going to do 36 divided by 12, which is 3. And let's double check. 12 times 3 is 36. 3 times 36 is 108. So that tells us that our ratio here is 3. So I'm just going to make sure we know that those are our answers. Okay, for C, a sub 1 is negative one-third, and notice that's in parentheses, to the first power, which is negative one-third. a sub two is negative one-third squared. Yep, that's the bell to go to class, so there you go. Um, negative one-third squared becomes one-ninth. a cubed would be negative one-third cubed, which is negative 20, I'm sorry, negative one over 27. So to find our ratio here, I'm going to do 1 ninth divided by negative 1 third. I know dividing by a fraction is like multiplying by the reciprocal, and I get negative 1 third is our ratio. Okay, for D, I'm going to do the same thing. A sub 1 is not n. We're substituting n for n, so it would be 1 squared, which is 1 a sub 2 would be 2 squared, which is 4. a sub 3 is 3 squared, which is 9. Now, looking at this, if I did 4 divided by 1 and got 4, that tells me that this would be our common ratio. 1 times 4 is 4. Our next number should then be 4 times 4, which is 16. And I don't have 16 there. So what this tells me is that we actually do not have a common ratio. Okay, this is not a geometric sequence. And what I want us to kind of look at now, if we look at these three that were geometric, notice that the ratio is whatever the base is for what I'm taking to a power. Okay, just like on arithmetic, it was the coefficient of n. If it's geometric, it's going to be the base. Notice on d, my base here is n, it's not a number to the nth power, so that's kind of showing me that it there's some sort of issue. 
So number two, it says find the first five terms of the geometric sequence if a sub 1 and equals 3 and r equals 2. So I know a sub 1 is 3, so to get to the next term I would multiply by 2, and then multiply by 2, multiply by 2, multiply by 2. So if we're given a sub 1 and r, it's pretty easy for us to find that sequence. Now, this is what some of us were having a tough time on, is determining the nth term formula for this specific sequence. So I'm going to go ahead and write a sub n equals something, why don't we just call it x, times 2 to the nth power. Now, I'm basing that off of what we saw on these problems where I noticed that all three of these, I had whatever the ratio is to the nth power. So I'm thinking in this case, since our ratio was 2, I have 2 to the nth power here. So I'm just going to substitute in one of our values. So I'm going to use a sub 1 equals 3. So I'm going to say 3 equals x times 2 to the first power. So I would get 3 halves is equal to x. So that tells me that my equation would be a sub n equals 3 halves times 2 to the nth power. Now, I just want to point out that this is not um, the equation that we're going to use for every geometric sequence. This is specific to this sequence only. We're going to learn now what we can do to actually find the nth term of any geometric sequence. Okay, so the nth term of a sequence has the form, and this is the formula we need to know, a sub n equals a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1 power. And I want to focus on what each of those terms really means. So we know that a sub n means any term in the sequence. a sub n is connected with this n. n is the order that it is in the sequence. a sub 1 we know is our first term, and r is our common ratio. Okay, so if we know that something is geometric, we need to have this specific formula memorized. So if we look at number three, it says find the eighth term of the geometric sequence with a sub 1 equals 24 and r equals 3 halves. So I'm going to say a sub n equals a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1 power. So I want to find the eighth term. I know the first term is 24 and our common ratio is 3 halves. And I'm going to take it to the 8 minus 1 power. So our calculator would be super important here because I'm going to do 24 times 3 halves to the 7th power. I'm going to have to go ahead and put this in my calculator and then use MathFract to simplify it. And I would get 6,561 over 16. So once again, a lot of this chapter comes down to me knowing those formulas really well. Okay, number four is a little bit different. It first of all asks us to find a formula for the nth term of this geometric sequence, and then it asks us what is the ninth term of the sequence. So the general things that we need to know, if it's geometric, it's a sub n equals some value times the ratio to the nth power. If it's arithmetic, it would be some power equals the difference times n plus x. That's kind of our unknown value. So I'm going to use this general formula to help us out here. So I'm going to write a sub n equals x times r to the nth power. Just by looking at this sequence, I can see that our r value is 3 because 5 times 3 is 15, 15 times 3 is 45. I also then can use any of these terms. I normally like to deal with the smaller value, so I'm going to say a sub n is 5. So 5 equals x times 3. Since 5 is the first term, I'm going to use 1 as my exponent there. So I get 5 thirds equals x. So our equation would be a sub n 
equals 5 thirds times 3 to the nth power. Now they're specifically asking us then to find the ninth term of this sequence. So I'm going to say a sub 9 equals 5 thirds times 3 to the ninth power. And that's something I would go ahead and put into my calculator and I would get 32,805. Now, sometimes the book isn't going to ask us to do this. And if, if not, then I would just use our general formula and substitute in in order to find the ninth term. The final thing that we're doing here is finding the sum of a finite geometric sequence. Okay, and this is going to be our formula right here. Okay, this is the formula that we're really focusing on. Um, once again, I want to stress that this is stuff that we need to have memorized. So it's a sub 1 equal, or a sub 1 times the quantity 1 minus r to the nth power divided by 1 minus r. And that's equal to the sum after n terms. So let's go ahead and we're actually just doing one example of this. So it says, find the following sum. So I know that I'm finding the sum from the first term to the twelfth term. Based on this information, I know that 0 0.3 is going to be our common ratio. But I just want to remind us, if we did not know that, I would need to find the first term and the second term. So the first term would be 1.2. The second term here would be 0.36. Our common ratio is any term divided by the previous term, which gives me 0 0.3. So that's what we have right here. So the sum of n terms is equal to a sub 1 times 1 minus r to the nth over 1 minus r. So I'm going to say the sum after 12 terms, and I'm using 12 because that's our upper limit of summation, equals, we found that a sub 1 was 1 1.2 times 1 minus 0 0.3 to the 12th power divided by 1 minus 0 0.3. Now one of the biggest mistakes that I will see on a problem like this is not putting it into your calculator correctly. So I just want to remind us that it is important that we put parentheses around numerators and denominators and a parenthesis around the entire fraction when we put it into our calculator. When I input that, I end up getting 1.714. So that is the sum after 12 terms of this specific sequence. So some things that I want to stress. Um, I would definitely expect to have a quiz on this. And we need to know these formulas. We need to have our arithmetic formulas memorized and our geometric formulas memorized. We need, we need to know when is something arithmetic instead of geometric. Why do we use a certain formula over another one? Okay, so those are all just little pieces that you guys need to know in order to be successful in this chapter.